Hello everyone, this is Marius from the GeoDesign course and today is the 4th of March, the first day and we have an exciting agenda ahead of us. So I prepared a few, a few notes from me just to follow through and not forget anything that I want to share with you guys. That's more of my notes and you can obviously follow along as you want as well. I did ask you to prepare a sketch uh, of the site with some of your ideas. It should look roughly like this one. I understand that uh, times of COVID, we don't really have access to any scanners. So most probably you actually took a picture of it with your cameras, exact, exactly as I did. And then, so what we want to do is first, before we import this sketch into AutoCAD, we just want to quickly open it in Photoshop or any similar application. So I'll just do that over here. And the first thing that we want to do is remove of this perspective angle and try to you know, uh, make it as close to a rectangle as possible. And there is actually a great tool for this in, in Photoshop you know, uh, under the crop tool. If you long click on it, you have access to sub commands over here and there's this perspective crop tool. So if you select that, then it's just like literally one, two, three, four clicks in each corner. And then except with this tick over here, it's going to remove this perspective tilt that you had in the drawing uh, while you took it. And then just quickly to uh, under filter, camera raw, I just want to change the exposure a little bit to make it a little bit brighter, bring up the detail using clarity and then under tone curves, maybe you know lower the darks a little bit and then high, up the highlights so it's a little bit more readable. Accept this, then just jump the layer, control J, so I'm creating a copy of that, create a layer mask so that we can you know, clean it up a little bit, we'll remove some unnecessary lines that we have over here create a layer underneath it so that we can fill it with white. So hitting control backspace, I just fill this layer uh, with white and then hit selecting the, the layer mask again, use your brush tool to paint away the things that you don't like. So I'm painting with black. If I hold the alt key on my keyboard and then click the right mouse button, and then move it to the right while holding I move it to the right and left. I'm changing the diameter of the brush and then up and down. It's just the hardness of it. So again, what I want to do is I just want to remove some lines that are mistakes or I just don't like them over here. I'm just removing, painting away this, this stuff that I, that I don't want to confuse either myself or if it's someone else that I'm actually handing the drawing over to. I would like to make sure that it's as clean as possible and it makes sense to them as well so that they know which kind of geometry I want to, to keep in the drawing. So, so this would be the lines that I want removed and now it's a little bit easier to read. We have a river with three islands that I proposed over here. Maybe clean this one out a little bit more. And then if I make a mistake, the advantage of working with masks rather than just erasing things from drawing is that a mask based workflow is non-destructive. So I can just shift click on it and I can see without a mask, it looks like that. Alt click on it, I see exactly where I painted the mask. Black means hide things, white means show them. So I can always, if for example, I made a mistake like this and I hide that, I can just switch the front color over here and paint it back in and then make the, the brush diameter smaller, switch again to black and then paint it away so that I'm a little bit clearer on what I want to have kept here, right? So something like that. That will be my, my drawing. Let's just save it, file, save as. And I'll just save it in my output data as a JPEG, sketch corrected, save, perfect. And it save maximum detail. 
So now that I have that, I switch over to my Autodesk Civil 3D uh, version 2019 window. You might be working with 2020, 2021, doesn't really matter. What matters is that each time you start a drawing, you need to make sure that you're starting with a correct template. And a template is essentially nothing else than just a set of settings that is saved in this particular drawing. And then it allows you to work faster and more efficiently and also according to, to some standards. So what I would like you to, to do is to choose under AutoCAD templates, Autodesk defaults, and there's this Autodesk Civil 3D metric. So we need to start our drawing with this template and it's going to take a second to pop it up. And depending on what you were doing, your previously, last time that you started the, uh, the application, your interface might look like slightly differently. And the reason for that is that AutoCAD Civil 3D comes with the, something that's called uh, workspaces. So if I click on the top left corner over here or bottom right where the wheel cog is, I can switch between different workspaces and the workspace is nothing else than just a collection of, of different tabs with different tools, you know, saved on these, right? And then, so depending on, on, on the task at hand, you would be switching between these workplaces to, um, to have access to, to different tools. So for us, the next task, I'll just look over here, is, um, is to establish a coordinate system for our drawing. And then the easiest way to do it is to switch to a planning and analysis workspace. And over here, we can, under map setup, we can go under coordinate systems and hit assign. And then we're presented with <clears throat> an overwhelming list of, of various coordinate systems at hand, and then which one is it that we actually should um, select. And then when you look under data that we have, we have different you know, files that have different extension of, extensions over here, and essentially they have the same name, and what is it, like nine, yes, nine files over here, they have different extensions, but, but the same name. And the reason for that is when you are exporting something from ArcGIS, for example, we exported these buildings as a shapefile over here. The shapefile itself holds the geometrical information, but it saves other kinds of information in different files over here. So for example, this DBF database file would have all the attributes saved in it. And then there's a PRG file, which actually if I if we have a look at it here, it holds the projection information of what coordinate system the the information has been saved to. So in our case, we can look it up over here. It's in 1989 UTM zone 32N projection or coordinate system. And then so going back to Civil 3D, we can choose from the category filter. We can just scroll down until we see our UTM, UTM 84, which is like this. And then it narrows down the selection for us just to the UTM coordinate systems. And then we select the UTM 84 32 and we assign it to our drawing. And it's a good practice just to save, save it now so that we don't lose the the work that we just did so far. So under output, I'll just save it as, uh, let's call it DLFG projection. All right. So we have our file saved. And the next step is um, we have established the coordinate system. Next step is to actually import some data into it. So again, we're still under planning and analysis workspace, map setup, it's already done. And now we would go to insert, the insert tab over here. And then we, under import, we have a map import command that we want to execute. We need to navigate to the folder where our data is stored. In my case, it's on my desktop and the geodesign folder under data. 
And then there is three shape files that are, if, if you don't have them, if you cannot see them, you need to just select the shape file from the drop down menu over there. And then let's import the buildings. So I just select that, hit OK. And I'm presenting with yet another window that asks me to choose some options. What I want to do here is essentially everything by default. I can just double check that my input coordinate system is, is uh, similar to the one that or the same that I'm using for my, for my drawing. And what I want to make sure is that I'm not losing all the attribute data that was exported out from ArcGIS. So what I need to do is I just click on this under data, I click on none, and then there is a little button over here that I need to click on again. And then at the moment, or by default, it's set to do not import attribute data, but we actually want it. So we just select create object data. And here you can see, okay, there's only one table to choose from. And I can look up the fields over here that come with this particular data set. We'll just grab them all. Okay. Okay. And then nothing happened. Black screen, right? Why is that so? It's probably because it imported somewhere, you know, we're close to zero over here and probably imported somewhere like 70 kilometers or 70 million kilometers to the right from it. So we just zoom extend, which we can do with double clicking the, the mouse wheel or the middle mouse button. And then we uh, zoom extend to the data that we just imported. We can repeat that step one more time. So map import. Let's import the contours that we have over here. OK. Again, we click on the data, none, this little ellipsis button over here, create object data. Here we're, we have, we're presented with two uh, data tables. So we make sure that we're taking the contours and then we hit OK, hit OK. And now we can see they align perfectly. What we can do as well, since we have enabled or we told the program, we told Civil 3D under map setup in which coordinate system it works, we can under the geolocation tab over here, we can actually turn an aerial map on. And this allows us, you know, it, uh, it only works if you're logged in to your Autodesk account. So if in the upper top corner here, you see a sign in prompt, you would have to either you know, create an Autodesk account if you don't have one and then log in. And then you're presented with these options and you might also have to check a box that you're agreed to, to the data handling policy. But essentially it uh, gives you the entire cutout of the UTM32 coordinate system uh, where, where you can switch between an aerial and a road map. In our case, the roadmap doesn't really do us, doesn't give us too much additional information. An aerial ma map might do the trick. Uh, it comes from from the Microsoft Bing um, map service. It's a fairly accurate data set, especially in Copenhagen. Not the highest resolution though, but it gives you, it's good enough for context. If you don't have access to it, or sometimes you just don't, you know, um, you want some higher resolution images coming from your drone footage, maybe, or whatnot, you can still go under insert and then import an image, which you might have saved. And we have this under our data set as well. Uh, so we have access to an aerial image that was saved as a GeoTIFF file. And it's a fairly big file, so you can see here it's 81 megabytes big. And if we look at the um, the file over here, like it, it's only one. It doesn't come with with a projection file like the other ones did. And the reason is it's a geotiff, so it already has this uh, geolocation information embedded in. What's important here is because it is this kind of file, so you don't want to modify this correlation, it's just a different word um, describing the location of this image in space. So you, you want this checked off. You, do, uh, you want it to automatically pop into place where, you, uh, where, where it belongs. Let me just hit, hit open, give it a second, and then you should, you should see the file uh, or the image where 
you want it to be. And then right now it's just occluding all the other geometry, just select it, right click anywhere on the canvas, display order and set it to back. And this way you, you can preview everything that you have. Again, it would be a good idea just to save, so hit Control S uh, so that we don't lose any progress over here. Perfect, let's look up um, what, where we're at. We have established the right coordinate system, we have imported some data, we have looked at Autodesk maps and imported a GeoTIFF image. Now that we have done that, let's just inspect it and let's make sure that everything that we've brought in from an external source, in this case, is you know meaningful and and that we can actually before we start doing any other things that we we just always need to inspect the data. So first things first, we can just turn this off and it looks alright. We can first of all we can fade it in and out, so essentially adjust the transparency of it. We can also just turn it off temporarily. We can then select this this border and then turn it back on if needed. Then let's double check whether the data that we brought in, the attribute data that we were so interested in, did it come across. So I just selected a contour line. We can see it's a polar line. It's on a layer called contours. And like there's these categories over here that I can twirl open. And then the very bottom category is OD, which is an abbreviation for object data. And then so these are the five fields that came with, with the contour information. So it's a six meter contour, I can tell over here. And then if I select one of the uh, polygons, so the buildings, other object data for buildings, I can see that there's many more options that came across. It just was dependent on the data set that, that we had at our disposal. All right, so um, it looks like everything is, is in place. We have all the data that we need. One sanit one more sanity check that I really like doing is, you know, over here in the top left corner, you can see that there's currently we're looking at at the site from top view. Let's switch to a perspective view or isometric view, and then uh, to navigate in the viewport, I'm using my middle mouse button or or my wheel. When I press it, I can pan around. If, if I hold shift and press my middle wheel, I can orbit. So essentially it's a 3D rotate feature. And then here, the moment I did that, I can see that there is, you know, something's off about that, right? And what is going on here? So I see that there's like three spikes going down. If I, on further inspection, if I zoom in on these, it seems I can select it to, to make it a little bit more visual. I can see that there was, you know, something that's um, following the, the edge of, of another building and it shoots down all the way to, to the very bottom of the ground. So how would I address that? First of all, I want to understand what I'm dealing with. It's a 3D polyline. And I see that it consists of these points, one, two, three, four, and there's two more down, down the ground. These are referred to as vertices. So multiple vertices, one vertex. And then over here, I can, under geometry, I can select you know, click through these and then this little cross is showing me which one is the current one. So I can just click through that and I see here that it's Z elevation value changes. So going back, it's 14.28, next one is 13.030 and the next one is minus 999. So what I'll just do is I just copy this one, control C, go to the next one, copy, paste it there, bring it up one more bring it up and one more, bring it up. Perfect. So this way we have fixed this issue. We have two more to go. To make it easier, maybe I'll just select these, change their color to make them a little bit more visible and then go to my top view. And here I can see there's one more and let's just uh, do the same trick over here. Current, current, current. All of them are good. And this is the troublesome one. So I just copy over the value from the one before and paste it here. And I think this has taken care of the issue. So I can change this 
back to by layer so that uh, I'm done. And now I'm having difficulties finding the red one. I don't know where it is, but I already marked it. So I can use a neat feature here under the properties panel and quick select. It's on the right, the last button. When I click it, I can select only objects. So object type would be multiple. I don't know what it is. I want to apply it to the entire drawing, but it's properties color, I want it to be equal to red. And then when I hit OK, it actually selected this 3D polyline for me. And what I can then do is I can just hit zoom and then zoom the object which is selected. So it's going to bring me or, or put it in the, in the center of the viewport. And then here I can also fix the, the vertex issue. So please do that. I'll just go ahead without doing this, but you, you should fix your all the errors in your file. Once you're done, just double check, okay, what is, what's going on here? You would have some polygons as well. And then in their case, in the case of a polygon, you would need to move the entire thing up. So I'll just show you with one. So let's make this one green, just so that we have a different um, different color to work with. And here again, I cannot really find it. I don't know where it is. So what I will do is quick select color equals to green. Okay. And then it shows me that this is where the selected polygon is. And then now I see that its entire elevation is at minus nine and nine. So what I will do is, but I see that it's, it, it has a neighbor and the neighbor had, is a 3D polyline. So I just go through the vertices and then this vertex, which is the neighboring mine is 13780. So what I want to do is I want to select my polygon, bring it up to 13780 and change the color back to by layer. All right, so we have everything fixed. I mean, let's just double check. You have one more polygon to fix on your own. And then there is this 3D polyline with a few vertices that are also off. So these would need to be fixed. But you'll do it yourself. And then so that we can move to the next step. And we actually finally want to bring in the sketch that we fixed in Photoshop. We want to bring in into our drawing. So what do we have here? Again, I just selected the border. And then I'm showing the image uh, from underneath. This was a GeoTIFF, remember, right? So this particular image had information, like geospatial information, so that the moment we imported it, it landed exactly at the spot that we wanted it to land. Pictures taken with our mobile phones, they don't have this kind of information, so we need to help this software a little bit. The procedure will be similar in the beginning and then we'll sort of like diverge from what we did. So under tying and analysis, insert our image tab and we go under image. And here we need to go to our folder output where we saved this corrected sketch. But here I actually want to modify the correlation, right? So the correlation between the, the sketch and the drawing. So I, need, I want to check this box that we had unchecked the other time, hit open, and it prompts me for some more information. It says, okay, you want to put it in, what do you want to do with it? Where do you want to put it? So under insertion, we just need to say, okay, I don't really know where the point is. You know, I could look it up here and type it up, or I should just hit pick and then, you know, put it somewhere here. And then it's asking you the next next question is, okay, uh, what is the rotation? Like, essentially, I don't know, so I just accept whatever it is. And then, you know, roughly the scale of it, I would assume it would be like this. And we just hit OK, and we already have our, our sketch. Um, so now it's out of place. And how do we align it with, uh, with what we can see here? So, you know, you could try doing something like this, that you have a scale bar over here, and then you would say, okay, let's let's first, first of all, let's measure the distance. So I just say distance, and then it start, uh, it helps me, helps me find the actual command. 
Oh no, yes, DIST is the command. Uh, and then I'll just click on one point, click on the other, and it says, okay, it's 94 meters, which is not bad, you know, for a ballpark. It was 100. So what I could do is I could just hit scale and specify a base point, which would be, doesn't really matter for this one. And then the next one is we need to say a reference. Okay, so from where, which is here, and I'll turn on my ortho so that I'm making sure that it's a parallel line. And then I would click on the end of the scale bar. And then it's asking me, okay, so we measured this 94 meters. How much is it exactly? And then I just type in 100. And now when I execute the distance command again, and then I'll specify it from here to there, you can see that it's almost exactly 100 meters and 164, right? So now that we have the alignment in place, we could try and, or sorry, the, the scale in place, we could we could try and rotate it, you know, and then do it like this, and then try to move it like with an M command and try to position it in place. It's a lot of work and you will never, never really uh, do it correctly. But what, what it, luckily there is a command that we can use, so we can just move it you know, somewhere over here. And then what we can then do is use the align command. I'm just typing these in align. And which one do we want to align? We select the object. So I'm selecting the image. I hit enter. And it's asking me specify first source point. So the first source point, in my case, let's see, you know, let's take this building complex over here. I'll take a corner of it. And I'll move it over here, and then it's saying specify first destination point. So, and then I'll I'll hit uh, the F three button, or select object snaps over here, so that it actually picks up the corner point that I'm moving it to. And then what's the next one? Specify second source point. And here I actually want to turn off my snaps because. You know, I don't want it to grab anything else. I, I really want it to allow me to select this corner point and then specify second destination point. So destination, again, snaps on is this guy. And then the third point would be this corner. Right here, let's zoom in, select, and go back. Bam. And it just puts it into position, does in okay job but it sort of like occludes the information be below it again select it right click anywhere display order sent to back and what you can see here is yeah okay they did an okay job there is some uh some distortion over here where does the distortion come from it comes from essentially the work that we did in photoshop right so this is this was so distorted the moment we took the picture that it's almost impossible to uh, to get it right. So what we could try and do is we could still try to scale it, you know, and then extend it. But essentially, like the better the there's this rule: garbage in, garbage out, right? So if your information, the in this case it would be the picture that you modified in Photoshop, if this is garbage, don't expect this alignment to be perfect. For the purpose of this tutorial, I just, you know, took this picture on purpose in an exaggerated way, and I called it sketch tilted. But then actually, you know, this is how you should take your picture, right? So try to aim to be as perpendicular to the viewing plane as possible. And, and if you start off with a um, with input data like that, you will get much higher quality results over here. I'm gonna leave it like this. It's uh, it was to demonstrate the point that you can still try and work with that, but be careful with what you're doing. All right, I'm just going to save for now uh, to not to lose anything. But then we're moving fairly fast over here, so we have covered four of these steps already 
And the next one would be, okay, we actually want to digitize this sketch, so essentially trace over it. And mind you, we're still in this planning and analysis um, to workspace. Let's just switch to one that's a little bit more suitable for this kind of work. So let's go to drafting and annotation. And again, you're going to see like a different subset of commands that are available to you. One of the thing, uh, things to consider here is that you know we want to organize information on uh, or drawing information in a way that we can access it easily. And one of the easiest way to do it is, is to use the so-called layers. And so here there's this big button layer properties. It just shows us how many layers do we have in this drawing. And you might ask yourself, where do these all come from? Then they are actually associated with the template. So they came with the Civil 3D default template. And it might be a little bit of you know intimidating to work with. So what we can do here is we can introduce some structure. And you can see that they all start with a letter and there's a dash and then there's like you know some other description. So we could follow this this naming pattern to make our lives easier. So let's just you know select one, hit um hit it with your right mouse button, rename layer, or just hit F2. And then the beginning of it, let's just do KU dash buildings, right? And we also had one that was something like contours from what I can gather. So you can just start typing and then it's going to bring you to this one. So let's F2 and then rename these to KU contours as well. And so now what we have successfully done is we have just renamed these layers, but we haven't simplified it in any way. But what we can do is when we see here, we have the so-called layer filters. It's essentially, think of it as grouping things. So if I just right click on the all um, menu over here, we can create a new properties filter, property being the name that we actually want to look at. So let's just give it a name. It's a filter name called KU. And then under name, if we just say, okay, show me everything that starts with K, U, and there's a dash. And then the asterisk, we need to leave it. So this little star, we're leaving it uh, for the software to understand that anything that comes afterwards is, is symbolized by this little symbol, this is asterisk here, right? So it's showing us these two layers. And then there's all remaining ones are still under all used layers, but here we're just simplifying that. And then the benefit here is this translates to also this menu, the layer menu over here, if you have it. And so, so we're able to, you know, look at drawing in a much simpler way. And then, so what the next step would be, we want to trace over it. So it would be a good idea to create a new layer to put the information on top. So this is the symbol under the layer menu, the first icon from the left, new layer. And we create it and it says, well, I created a new layer, but its name doesn't fit into the pattern that you have created here. So it's not shown here. So where is it? We need to go to all, la all use layers filter, just by default, they're just uh, named L, like layer one, two, three. And then if we rename this one to KU sketch uh, lines, then it's going to automatically pop up in this one. It's way easier to work with. Um, let's just change the color of it. So under the color menu, just click on, on this one and we have you know different colors to, to choose from. And what I what helps me as well is just to get rid of the things that we don't need for now. So what I would do is I would, for example, get rid of the uh, the contour lines. How can I do it? I can either go to the layer menu and then just freeze the contour lines so you can see they disappear from the drawing. Or what I find a little bit more intuitive is I would like to grab the freeze layer command and then just click on the line work that I want to get rid of. And then it just automatically freezes it without me really knowing where the line work was located. And then the last step that we need to do is we need to make sure that we're 
our KU sketch lines is an active layer. So just double click on the, the status pane over here. And then you could see that there was a checkbox and the right saying that our KU sketch lines is the active layer. Okay. And then under the drawing, so again, dra drafting annotation, workspace, draw pane, uh, polyline command. We can just start drawing polylines and you can see uh, because we have changed the colors a little bit more visible. Now we'll just trace over you know, what we did there before. And then because it still has my snaps on, I would most really turn it off. Uh, not to confuse it, and there is also my snapping reference line on, so I also turn them off so that I can freehand sketch enter. Okay, so we see that, for example, this geometry disappeared, and then which essentially means that it was drawn underneath the image. So again, just select your image, right click, display order, send to back. And then now we can see it selected, but it's a little bit too thin, you know, it's somewhere here, right? It's here. Um, so what we can do, because it's a polyline, it has a width, global width attribute, and we can just change it to maybe two meters, and then essentially displays or represents Let's try it again. Okay, uh, so there was a display glitch over here. If it set, happens to you, then just regen all. It just uh, tells AutoCAD to just refresh everything, redraw it. And if there's geometry disappearing, you can just do it. Uh, should bring it back in place. So for example, over here, what I just did using this uh, polyline, I have created a an outline that is two meters wide. So this could represent a path, for example. And then I can draw another polyline. So I would just either click this icon over here, I would just type in POL polyline. And then uh, here I actually want to snap to this existing geometry, turn off the snaps using F3, and I would just trace over, you know, maybe this particular line here and when i hit enter it stops and you can see again i would i would like to change its global width so that it's also visible and then this way you would digitize the rest of your drawing and just clicking through it and um, how to deal with with these a uh, little bit more organic shapes right rather than using a polyline you would probably like to use a spline that is um, hidden under under these these menus, and there's two different types of splines you'll see in a second. But essentially, no matter which one you, you choose at the beginning, you would work in the same way. So you would just click, 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 and then hit C to close it because I wanted it to be a closed one. It's a bit hard to see here, so maybe I'll just move it using the move command. I'll just move it outside so that we can see a little bit better. Uh, this spline or a spline they don't have global width parameters it's only only the polylines that that have this option but what we can do is either with a spline you can either adjust the knots directly or we can click this triangular drop down menu here and then we will be presented with control vertices which um, don't lie on this line exactly but you know depending on the on the situation it might be easier to control it with a particular uh, set of controls so then you can just always switch between these doesn't really matter and using a move command and moving it back in i just did it for the purpose uh, of the video but then if i would be working i would be actually working over here like trying to find these lines. And I, my personal preference is to use the control vertices. I find that they are they, them a little bit more intuitive to work with, but you know, your mileage may vary. So, so by all means, use whichever option 
you prefer. And then here, what we can do is we can always select the image and then you know we just fade it in a little bit um, so that we can still see it, but it's way easier to work with, right? And so again, for example, this one, I would also just start typing spline, I would click, 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 and um, move it into position, switch to a different mode, and massage it so that it, it is closer to the desired shape. Also bear in mind that, you know, the first thing that we, or the thing that we're looking at, it was just a sketch, and it might have looked good on the paper, but it's, you know, you, you should never be trying to recreate it one-to-one. -one. You're looking at it, and it's a good thing. Like, if you start panning, the image disappears, so you're looking only at the at the shapes that you drew here, right? And you're actually trying to, to find a, a shape that, that works in this particular setup, right? So if you want it to be a little bit, you know, more organic, then you would, you would play with these, all right? Okay. Uh, so this will be the, the exercise to continue, and then you essentially need to create all these lines or recreate them in, in your digital drawing. And this will be, uh, this will probably take you, you know, a good half an hour to, to an hour to really bring everything in, make sure that, um, that you're drawing proper lines and uh, make sure that all these features are actually closed. So the way I do it is I'm, when I'm writing, uh, drawing a spline, I click a few points and then I'm not trying to hit the bottom, uh, the first one, I'm, I will just choose the close option here or hit C on the, on the keyboard to close it. And, and for your paths, you actually want either a center line the way you would do it so right now it's just one line that has that has a width and helps me block things out but in the moment i'm i'm confident that it's actually the line that i, I would like to work with then i would reduce this width back to zero and then and then here again like disappeared so what we could do is regen all and it should pop up again on top of everything and then you see here, for example, it's cutting through this building, right? So, so I'm definitely sure that it's not the right. It's probably because uh, you know of the offset of my of my sketch. So I'd make sure that it um, that it goes to its position and again, region all. And then to achieve the same two meters. So this is my center line of the path, but to achieve the um, the two meter width of it, I would use the offset command. And I would say, what is the distance to offset to? And then it will be one meter. And then do I want to offset to one side or both sides? Actually, I want it to be on both sides. And, and now, uh, I think I only offset it to one anyway. But then I can repeat it. I believe this was the original geometry. And then so offset one meter on this side, yes. And, uh, and now I have my center line and I have my side curves, if you will. And why is this important? You'll see in, in uh, future classes that we actually care about these. It's, it's all about grading, like we want uh, to be able to have individual control of both sides of the path and also of, um, of the center line. So this is the assignment. Please go after you have um, georeferenced geo your drawing, imported the, the map information and, and your sketch. You just need to digitize, digitize it now and then create all these pole lines and splines. Good luck.